Welcome, I'm Kinetic Symphony, this is Dave. I hunt down and report on weird and true mysterious stories, from glitches to the supernatural. Case file number 1700, written by Every Man a Wild Cat. Go off surprise with Barry's timely rise. It was 2006, I think. I was 16. My dad and I played golf together a lot. Usually at least once a week. We played an unfamiliar course one day due to booking late and availability issues. We're from the Kansas City metro area, which most of you probably know lands right on the Kansas and Missouri state line. We're from Kansas and typically play near where we live in the suburbs. But as I said, this particular day, we were forced to play a long way from our house, probably 20 miles and on the Missouri side. So we get paired with a third guy. His name is Barry. He's a nice old guy, probably 65 or 70, tall, had a bucket hat. Well that day, I was slicing the ball really bad, forcing me to lose a lot of shots into the woods on the right. I remember my dad had gifted me some really quality golf balls recently, and I put about 5 or 6 in the woods and was really beating myself up about it, despite his insistence that it's part of the game and there's no reason to be upset. So fast forward to the end of the round. We say our goodbyes to Barry, and as I'm packing my bag into the car, I notice Barry slipped a few sleeves of new golf balls into my bag. I almost cried, it was such a thoughtful and willy old guy move. My dad was incredibly appreciative of the gesture. I think we tried to wave him down to say thanks as he pulled out, but he was gone. The next week, my dad hurt his back at the gym or work, I can't remember. And we took the rest of the summer off golf. Fast forward almost 10 months. We're finally playing our first round back together, and we booked a tea time at one of our favorite courses, much closer and more familiar to us. On the way there, I said to my dad, Hey, wouldn't it be weird if we got paired with Barry again? He just kind of looked at me with an odd expression and was like, Well, yeah, that would be weird. He definitely thought it was just a really off the wall question. I mean, it was. We were playing a completely different course on a different day of the week, completely different time of day. Essentially, all things that would decrease the odds of getting paired with someone you've played with before. But there he was, on hole one, with our same tea time. He pulled up behind us on the first tee box, and my dad fainted. I think he asked me if I coordinated that as a joke, which obviously I hadn't. He went on to explain to Barry how I had asked how weird it would be if we played with him today, and how he thought that was such a weird thing to even think about, let alone voice. He explained how this was our first round back since the last time we'd played with him. And then get this, it was Barry's too. He was a regular golfer like we were, but for some reason, he hadn't played since the exact last day we played together either. We went on to have a perfectly fine and normal round of golf. I think he put more balls in my bag when I wasn't looking, though I didn't lose as many this time. And I think my dad got his business card. Insurance salesman, maybe? We joked about how we needed to stick close to this man, because it seemed like fate that he was paired with us twice. If my dad was still alive, I bet he'd have that business card somewhere. I kinda wonder what old Barry is up to. I suppose you could chalk this up to the ultimate coincidence. But the amount of things working against coincidence is hard to buy. The time between these incidents, the fact that they were both our most recent golf outings, despite all parties being regular golfers, the courses being in completely different cities, 20 miles apart, and obviously the fact that I speculated at the very possibility. That is the most bizarre part to me. Quesson Surfile 1700. Golf surprise with Barry's timely rise. I think you and your dad were onto something. I think this was a guardian angel event where this guardian angel wanted you to interact with Barry, you and your dad, maybe just one of you, but probably both of you, and so arranged enough dominoes of fate in order to lead you towards meeting him again. It's like, this is your clue, guys. Do you get it? Come on, catch on. <laughs> That's the uh, process in the guardian angel's mind. Of course, there's still free will. I don't think guardian angels can force anything to happen. So if you don't see the sign and act on it, well, there's not much they can do beyond uh, heavily weighing the cards, so to speak. My guess is that Barry, being in both of your lives, would somehow have massively improved your lives or changed them, altered them in some way maybe prevented a tragedy that could have been avoided with Barry's help. Something along those lines. Case file number 1701, written by AGB5's Ocean, 
Anna's necklace bond from the beyond. So I had been friends with this girl that I met on the internet since I was 12 years old. When we were 16, we finally got the chance to meet in person and spend a week together in a cabin. When we met, she gave me this handmade stone necklace. That necklace meant a lot to both of us, so I never once took it off. Fast forward about 6 months. I got close with a new group of friends, junior year of high school. They became my best friends, and still are to this day. One of the girls, Anna, mom had passed away, unexpectedly, before I got the chance to meet her. There was this railroad track bridge we used to jump off all the time after school. The first time I was about to jump, I felt my neck and worried that the necklace would fall off. I told myself it would be fine, and I would just put it in my bag after I got out of the water. I jumped and immediately felt my neck after coming up. The necklace was gone and I was pretty bummed about it. Fast forward another 6 months. I walk into Anna's grandma's house and the necklace is strung around her mom's urn above the fireplace. I lost my crap. I asked everyone who was in the house in the past 6 months if they put it there. Everyone said no, they thought one of us had put it there. While I was attempting to find out who put it there, we discovered that I received that necklace on the same exact day Anna's mom died. Down to the same hour of the day. I never met her, but I have dreams a lot where she's trying to talk to Anna through me. Since then, my dad passed away, the same way she did. Substance overdose. Anna has a lot of dreams where my dad talks to me through her. Even referencing things that only he and I have talked about. Not sure exactly what is making all of this possible, but I'm happy that it is. Case Answer Found 1701 Anna's Necklace Bond from the Beyond my assumption, the girl's, your friend's mother, Anna, passed away, a fragment of her soul lingered behind, tethered to your friend, and Anna saw that you were jumping out, that the necklace was important to you because you tugged at it first, you lost it in the water, but then Anna retrieved it, and then in the only other place she was bound to, her own urn, her own ashes, she returned it there because she knew, yeah, she's going to come here eventually and she'll see it, or probably will. Simple retrieval, not DOP in this case, but from a real human soul. Expert lost and found indeed. Even though this is all explainable, I think it doesn't make it any less incredible. Now time for the quote of the day. Tyler Durden. You are not your job. You're not how much money you have in the bank. You're not the car you drive. You're not the contents of your wallet. You're not your freaking khakis. From the movie Fight Club. People do assign their value tremendously to... The money they have, their material possessions, everything like that. But no, who you are really is your personality, your choices, the things you act upon, not the things you've accumulated. That isn't to say that money doesn't matter at all or that wanting to have more money is bad. It's just there's a threshold where if you cross it and you become obsessed more towards the obsession part, that's when it becomes a problem. And I think a lot of society, especially in the US, is geared so much towards these material things and losing sight of what really matters, you know, having free time to spend with people that you care about. Is there anything that could matter more than that? I don't think so. You know, like everything in life, it's always a balance and try not to let it skew too far in one direction. Like the video, subscribe, hit the bell. Connect Symphony signing off.